helping people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Canadian Certified Counselor and Award-Winning Psychotherapist. Hi, this is Michael Hart of Elam Counseling Services, and I want to thank you for joining us in this episode of the Life Transformation Radio Show. Today's show is the third part in the series of Ungodly Spirits. This show is about the spirit of Ahab. Stay tuned, this show is going to be a very good one, just as the other two parts of the series. But before I get into the show today, let me welcome all of you who are listening. If you're listening for the first time, welcome to the Life Transformation Show. We're on the air every Monday morning at 9.30 a.m. And as usual with me in studio today is Melissa Wagot. Welcome, Melissa, and thank you very much for being here as usual. <laughs> <laughs> You're so welcome, Michael. It's always great to join you in studio and to get to go over these excellent topics and to get to join the listeners each and every week. Yeah, so maybe you should go, go ahead, Melissa, and tell the listeners who might be listening for the first time a little bit about ELIM and what we do and and so forth. Yeah, you're, so you're, you're very good at this. <laughs> I, I so give that to you. Perfect. So if you're just joining us for the first time, I'd like to say welcome to you all. So ELIM is a Christian counseling organization located right here in Ottawa. We provide professional counseling services on a sliding scale for a variety of different mental health conditions, relationship challenges, um, and life challenges in general. But the unique part of this um, counseling ministry is that we come at things from a Christian perspective. All the certified psychotherapists on staff are Christian, and they do incorporate that into their therapy and their counseling if uh, the client chooses. We also try our best to offer counseling to people who may otherwise not be able to afford it. So we do have a sliding scale that is available for individuals who may not have insurance plans and um, things that they can get coverage for uh, psychotherapy services. But to do this, we do require donations. So if this is a ministry that you've been blessed by in the past or you've enjoyed listening to this radio show, we do... Um, ask that you consider making a donation so that we can provide these essential counseling services at an affordable rate for individuals who may otherwise not have access to it. If you'd like to get more information about Elam Counseling Services, you can always check out our website at elamcounselingministry.com. Elam is spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com. While you're there, you can check out a variety of resources and past podcasts of this radio show. If you prefer, you can always call us as well at 613 613- Six nine nine one six seven seven, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have about our counseling services or this radio show. How's that, Michael? Did I cover That's all excellent. our bases? I so think <laughs> you, you did all the bases. I don't need to add anything to that. That was perfect. Excellent. I always like to check in with my teammate here. Um, and so as Michael said off the top, we are going to be talking about the spirit of Ahab today. But before we get into today's show, we wanted to give the listeners an update for people who've been listening um, to us. You know, we had a healing retreat over the weekend of June 9th to 11th. So that has come and gone. And Michael, I know you wanted to just sort of give an update for people who have been praying for this time of healing and uh, breakthrough, just what God actually did in people's lives that weekend. The healing retreat was just such an amazing time. I think people who came were actually blessed beyond what they expected. The majority of the people, I would say, was blessed beyond what they expected. And we have some breakthrough that happened that I think was just as a result of the the, the, the multi, multitude of prayers that were offered on behalf of this retreat. One thing that I had said before is that the team of people who volunteer for this retreat have been praying for many months. And I think that what we saw at this retreat this weekend was just reaping the rewards of all of those prayers that went up to God. We had some supernatural things happen. Like we had a gentleman who had a a dream uh, one night and he was speaking to one of the prayer partners about the dream and the prayer partner spoke a word of of prophecy over him and said, you're going to have another dream uh, tonight. And he went back to bed and he had another dream and the dream that he had was exactly what he needed for his situation to get a breakthrough. Through. And I know that could not have happened except it was the Spirit of God that was leading it. Uh, we had a couple came all the way from Alberta, and I think uh, th- th- that couple that came from Alberta uh went back to Alberta saying that we have tools that we are going to take into our community that can help believers there and that they also 
receive deliverance in their own lives for things that have been impacting them for many, many years. So it was just an unbelievable weekend. Time would not permit me to go into all the all the, the wonderful things that happened on the weekend. So again, thank you very much for praying for this retreat and continue to pray for this ministry that God would continue to use this ministry to bless people, not just in Ottawa, but across Canada and, and across the world. Because I know that there are many people that listen to this podcast, even from other countries as well. And it's so encouraging. We serve a living God that is still active and at work in our lives today and meets us right where we need it, when we need it. So thank you everyone who has prayed for this retreat. And as we've said in the past, we will have upcoming healing retreats coming up in the fall. So listen for the updates on those. And if this is something you feel led to attend, please, please give us a call so that you can get your name on the list. So without further ado, today we're going to be breaking apart the Ahab spirit. Yes. Um, and this is part three of our three-part series. If you've missed the earlier parts, check out our website at elamcounselingministry.com and have a listen. So Ahab is probably one of the more famous duos because he's married to a very famous woman the, the lady of infamous. jezebel infamous yes it's probably true she, the, the the infamous jezebel yes was yes. paired with our, and our it's friend not by Ahab. chance that we don't have any anybody that names their daughters jezebel probably right? not a good idea <laughs> and if your name is our apologies in, in advance so so yeah so jezebel has this bad rap Mm -hmm. And she's kind of part of the reason, too, we're looking at the guy side of things on this. And Ahab was paired with Jezebel. Yes, I think we hear a lot about the Jezebel spirit. And yes, we do hear some somewhat about the Ahab spirit. But I wanted to look at it in a, in, in a, a very deep way today and just begin to highlight some of the points that captures this Ahab spirit and maybe give some insights into how to deal with that if you realize that the Ahab spirit is at work in your relationship. In the 16th chapter of Kings, verse 29, we read that Ahab, son of Omri, became king. And we are told in that passage that he did more evil in the sight of God than any other king before him. We are also told that he married Jezebel, daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians. And so we have here a situation in which Ahab, one of the kings of Israel, became a, a, a king that turned his back on God. He turned his, himself away from everything that God commanded and did the exact opposite. And we are told that he did more evil than any of the other kings before him. And as a result of that, he became one of the, the better known kings, but not in a good way, in a bad way. And part of the, the reason in which he, part of the reasons why he became that sinful and slipped that far away from God is because of who he married. He married this daughter of a king by the name of Jezebel. And Jezebel led him even more away from the things of God into the worship of Baal. But why did he marry Jezebel in the first place? I think that gives us the first characteristic of the Ahab spirit. Because the first characteristic is that people with the Ahab spirit tend to be focused on material things. This was a very strategic marriage because Ahab is marrying to the daughter of this king for a number of reasons. It, it, it's a, it was a very savvy political move. You have another king that you're married to her daughter. It's, it's, making, it's, it's, it's giving you security in the time of war. It's giving you more wealth. And so he's marrying to Jezebel, not necessarily because this is something out of love or this is something that God wanted, but because of what he could get out of it. So men with the, the, the spirit of Ahab are men who are focused on material things and in many ways will do whatever to, to, to obtain material wealth. And so, when you're looking at someone with the Ahab spirit today, what kind of things are they replacing it with? Is it is it like you said, making those savvy political decisions in relationships? Right. So it might be people who will do anything to get a job because this is the job that 
it's going to make them wealthy. It's going to, they think that this wealth is going to make them happy. So they will do anything to get that job. Or they will, they will go out of their way to look successful because it's very important for them to have this outward image of being successful. And so it's more focused on the material things instead of the spiritual things. Because by marrying into this family, he was going against the commandments of the, the, the commands that God has given, where God said in the Old Testament that, that they were not to marry the daughters of these nations. But because he was getting something out of it, he was more focused on what he was getting. And in and in the in the in the, the pursuit of accumulating material wealth and having security, he ended up contravening the, 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 the words of God, contra- going against the commands that God has specifically given not to do such a thing. So for peop- for men with Ahab spirit, the first character- characteristic is that these men are focused on material things and they sometimes embark on ungodly ways to get those things. They will lie, they will cheat, they will deceive as a way of getting more of accumulating wealth because they are in fact just as as Ahab were were, were just as Ahab was worshiping Baal these men are actually worshiping material things so what other characteristics do we see in someone who has the Ahab spirit the, the second characteristic is that these men are men who are out of touch with their spiritual roots they may have grown up in the church they they may have had uh, parents who led them through Bible studies and they know everything about what it is that they are supposed to be doing. They can quote the scriptures from memory because they grew up in it. But the way that they are living is showing that they have compromised their spiritual roots. They're not living according to what they believe. So in other words, they might actually speak like an angel, but live like the devil. So if they're putting on such a good show, how do you actually know that the Ahab spirit's going on? And it's not someone who actually is good and is solid in their faith and doing things right. How do you know when the Ahab spirit's at work? It's often very difficult to tell. A lot of times the only person that know that this person is not what they're portraying to be uh, in, in their public persona is the are the wives. The wives will know. So I have seen many situations where uh, wives of people in leadership, whether they be lay preachers or pastors, will say that I don't want to sit there one more Sunday to hear another message of how great our family is because I know it's not true. So so the, the, the wives will know that this is not true. But then also people who have discerning spirits who they can they can see through the facade will also know that what they're saying doesn't seem to add up with what they are they have noticed from their lifestyle of or what they have what they have seen or what they have sensed in the spirit. And I think also to other family members often know that the person who is portraying them themselves to be this godly person with the right lingo that they have compromised their spirituality people will know because it's very hard to it's very it's very hard to hide that and i think uh it uh, in a lot of cases eventually over the long run these things usually come out because it's impossible to hide and to live a lie for a very long time so in in some cases you will have that the the pastors will suddenly have to leave the church, mysteriously leave the church, or there will be some sort of a scandal. But in a lot of times, these things will will come to the surface if there is an Ahab spirit at work. So what are the things can people look for for in the Ahab spirit? In the Ahab spirit, we also see a, a, a passivity in the leadership role. So Ahab was the king of Israel. But we see that he wasn't the real, the real the person that was leading. He had Jezebel, who was actually playing the role of leader. And this is, this, this is shown very powerfully or, or, or very forcefully in an incident in 1 Kings 21, verse 78, where he reads as follows, that Jezebel, his wife, said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get 
you the vineyard of Naboth, the, Ze- the Jezreel, Jezreelite. And so we have a situation here where he wanted to have the garden of Naboth, but, Go- but Naboth said, no, I can't give you my garden because my ancestors, it's my ancestors' ground, and so I can't give this to you. And we are told that Ahab went home and he wouldn't eat, and he started sulking. And when Jezebel realized that he was sulking, he, she, she came to him and started saying, is this the way you're acting as a king? You are the king. You are the leader. And then what she did next in verse 8, it reads that, so she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in neighbor's city with him. And it, and so she created this scheme where she was using her husband's seal, her husband's authority, to 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 get things for him. So we see that he is the leader, but in in a sense, is a figurehead leader, and Jezebel is actually the one who is doing the the leadership. So men who have the Ahab spirit, who married to women who have the spirit of Jezebel, they're actually women who are actually leading. And a lot of times in leadership positions, even in, in church circles, where you might think that these directives are coming from the leader, from the pastors of the church, if there's a Jezebel spirit behind, it's possible that just as in this story where you, you see, you're seeing the seal of the king and you think, yes, this is what the king is saying, it's not really coming from the king because the spirit of Jezebel is often behind uh, men in leadership position who have the Ahab spirit. And so it's very careful, it's very important to realize that when this dynamic is at play, this duo is at play, it's like a tag team leadership where they're both doing each other's work. They're both using each other. They're, they're, they're both using each other to get what they want out of the relationship. And this isn't a healthy partnership, it's right? It's not a healthy partnership. It's not like they're tag teaming and working together for good. It's in an unhealthy way. It's in a very unhealthy way. There's a codependent because Ahab is passive and he cannot act his role as a leader. And so he has someone with a Jezebel spirit who, who is playing the role of leadership and doing what he, he is supposed to be doing. And in some cases, even going against what he wants. Because I think if you read that story carefully, you will see that Ahab had some kind of a heart that said, if this man's ancestors are own this piece of land. I will not take it away from him. I might want it very badly, but it's against my conscience to take this away, even if I am king. Jezebel said, no, you are the king. You can get whatever you want. Is this the way that a man acts? And so a lot of times we find that men with the the the, the Ahab spirit, they have women who are with the Jezebel spirit who are telling them that you're not man enough. If you are man enough, this is how you would deal with that person who spoke to me like that. Or this is how you should handle that situation. And a lot of time these men end up going against their own principles and their own beliefs because they're trying to please the person with the Jezebel spirit. If you're just joined us, you're listening to the Life Transformation Radio Show. Today we're doing part three of our three-part series of ungodly spirits, and we're talking about the spirit of Ahab. If you've missed the first part of the show or our past uh, segments of this series, we encourage you to listen to them on our website at elamcounselingministry.com. Elam is spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com. Or you can always give us a call at 613-699-1677 and we will connect you with a copy. So how do people with the Ahab spirit in leadership roles in the church look today? How does that play out in church circles? Well, or does I, it? I, I think a lot of times it it plays out in a way that people who are discerning would not realize that this is at play. Because I think as Christians, we tend to be very trusting of our leaders. And by leaders, I'm not just talking about pastors. I'm talking about people in leadership positions. But a lot of times we see that in in this passive role, if they have the air spirit and they're not playing the role, how it plays out is that you have others. It may be a board. It may be other people who who have uh, strong personalities that are really running 
the show, and then these people are just figureheads, and you think that they're the one leading, but really they have very little, if any, say, because they're passive and they cannot stand up to their conviction. Ahab is a man who lacks conviction to stand up for his principles and to fight for what he thinks is right. So how it plays out in the church in, in, in many ways is that people with the Ahab spirit ends up letting other walk over them, let others do whatever they want to do because they don't have the 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 intestinal fortitude to to stand up for their convictions. So what other things do we see in the Ahab spirit? The Ahab spirit blame others for their problems. And so we we have a situation here where after the idol worship, the Baal worship that Ahab introduced led to the punishment of God coming upon the nation instead of Ahab repenting and saying, what have I done? God must be punishing us because we have turned against him. What we find in 1 Kings 18 verse 17 to 19 is that he blamed Elijah. He turned on the messenger of God who was bringing the message of God's judgment and say, you are the problem. You are the one who is bringing this problem into on our nation. And so in, in, in today's situation, people with the Ahab spirit, when they go after materialism, when they neglect their spiritual life, when they are passive in their role of leadership, and if we take it in the context of the family, and the family starts running into difficulties, maybe the children are acting out, maybe they're, they're getting into financial debt and, and they're going into bankruptcy, instead of saying, you know what, I didn't play my role as leader of this family, they start blaming their wives or they start blaming other people in society and they start putting the blame on everyone else instead of looking inwardly and saying, it is because of my action why we're going through this. So they're really not taking ownership for their actions at all. Absolutely not. They're, they're not. And so what other characteristics do we see with this Ahab spirit? Is there anything else that you've identified through your reading? Yes, I think one more characteristic of, of the Ahab spirit is that uh, men with the Ahab spirit, they tend to underestimate the consequences of their actions. In First Kings 16, verse 31, we read that He not only considered it trivial to commit sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. So in other words, the writer is telling us that when Ahab started committing the sins of Jeroboam, he considered it a trivial thing. He didn't consider it a big matter. So one of the the, the, the final qualities that people with this Ahab spirit, they do things that will cause the hair on the back of our necks or other people's necks to stand up. But to them, it's a minor thing. And often you will, people will ask the question is that how could this person be doing this as a believer and say that they're a believer? How, how could they get to, into this kind of a, of a lifestyle? And so a lot of time it's based on, uh, this, this, inability to self-reflect. They have no way of self-reflecting to see, to really assess how they're acting. So I think Ahab, to fall to that level of idol worship, had to be in a state where he wasn't thinking about the consequences of his actions and how it would affect the nation in the long run. All he could see was the immediate reward from what is happening. So people who have the Ahab spirit, they tend to they tend to be very short sighted instead of instead of seeing the long term consequence of their actions. And so something we've done each time we've looked at these different spirits is examine why these spirits come into play in the first place. So what gives rise to someone having an Ahab like spirit? I think the Ahab spirit uh uh originates from certain dynamics in a person's life growing up that predispose them to have these qualities that we talk about. So in in some cases, it can be that this person had an absent father. And, if, and by absent, a father could be absent either emotionally or, or physically. So in other words, emotionally, the father is there in the household. But 
physically they are there in the household, but emotionally they are not there. They are emotionally de detached. And so they are not there. They're raising a family where the father figure is absent emotionally or, or physically. And so they are not getting this role model of how what male leadership looks like. And so this creates a void in the person's life that is usually filled by the spirit of Jezebel because they don't have that, that leadership ability. They don't have the ability to be able to focus on what's important. So even if you t take the first of the points that I raised, that they're focused on material things, the material things are simple, a way of trying to fill that emptiness that's created by the absent father figure. The other thing that we find that can create the Ahab spirit is where they grew up in a household where, yes, the father may have been there and the father is present physically and emotionally, but you have a very dominant and controlling mother that drowns out the emotional climate of the household, dominates the emotional climate of the household. And as a result, these men grow up very wounded and very passive because they, they didn't have a voice. They had to be submissive to this dominant uh, mother, this dominant uh, uh, mother that, that controlled the, 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 the emotional climate of the household. So if someone's listening today and maybe they're identifying themselves in Ahab or maybe they're identifying their spouse or someone they know or work with, what should they do to overcome some of the challenges that we've seen through the Ahab spirit? Well, I think if we, if we look at some of the points that we have raised today, if, the, if you realize that you have a Ahab spirit, then first of all, it's, it's a good thing to realize that there is nothing that you're going to, to gain in terms of wealth or material possession or 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 status in society that is going to fill that void that is in your in your heart or in your soul because that void cannot be filled by material things. It can only be filled by God. And that void needs to be healed as well. And so if you are if you realize that you have this Ahab spirit, one of the first things is realize that the things that you're you're pouring in is never going to do. The other thing I would say is if you realize that you have made mistake and your life is totally falling apart and you're realizing that some of the actions that you have made were very short-sighted actions, take responsibilities for your actions. Don't blame others and seek help because uh, th these spirits are very deep-rooted and I think you you can get help. You, you, can, you may need someone to to, to pray over you and, and to help you break that, that spirit that is in your life. But you might also, along with that, need psychological help where you might need to go and sit down and go to the very root of where this started in your life so you can be healed from the tendencies to act out in the act out the spirit of Ahab. And so if you want to reach out for help, we encourage you to check out our website at elamcounselingministry.com. Elam is spelled E-L-A-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com, or call us at 613-699-1677. Yes, and so we are out of time for today, Melissa. So it's a very interesting topic. And if, you, if you're listening to this show and you have a question or a comment, please feel free to give us a call at 613-699-1677 or go to our website at elimcounselingministry.com. You can also leave a comment on our, our Facebook page by going to the website. You can access the, the Facebook page. So until next time, this is your host, Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services. And Melissa Waggett. Praying together that God would bless you in all your relationships and keep you sound in mind and pure in heart. Mm -hmm.